So uh, this presentation now has to do with what I said before about uh, the values and the significance are at the core of the risk management approach, right? So it's one tool that we have developed and are using as part of the approach, which is called the value pie, right? So I'll just try to introduce that to you in this uh, presentation and to justify its use. So out of the several definitions of risk that we find around in dictionaries and uh, standards, one is the possibility of loss, right? So it's not only the, the chance of something happening, but it's also its impact. The loss of what? How much is the loss? How big is that loss, right? So when we think about risk, we look at the chance of that happening, and then we also try to assess how big will be this loss. Right? This is a quote by a compendium uh, on uh, risk management or risk analysis. The source is there, this model assist. Uh, several risk experts contributed there. And one of them says, in order for a risk analysis to help the manager determine which options are to be preferred, so we're talking about the decisions, right? A clear question should be stated in terms of a quantitative estimate. So we need to quantify something to help us make our decision, right? Some examples in other fields, if you talk like uh, marine ecosystems, when you look at the risks, uh, not sure, climate change or that kind of thing, the impact, so often they talk about uh, potentially disappeared fraction of species in that marine ecosystem. So how much are we going to lose of the species that exist there? So that's a quantitative indicator, right? If you talk epidemiology, like new diseases coming in every day, so one, a couple of indicators would be how many disease cases do we expect in the country in the next year? Or how many expected uh, years of life loss in the population? So health ministry, they, they deal with that kind of indicator, right? If you are on the stock break, so finance, so just profit or loss, how much do I think I'm going to make or lose if I, if I invest there? And, and countries have the risk index, right? Each country has this risk index for uh, foreign investors. So it's a, it's a number. And investors decide whether or not to invest there based on this risk indicator, right? So this examples of quantitative indicators. How about heritage sector? <clears throat> what would be a suitable indicator when we talk about risk to heritage assets? So in the approach we are adopting, this is the quantitative indicator we are using. The expected fractional loss of value to the heritage asset per unit time. For instance, if we identify a certain risk and we don't do anything about it, there's a chance that we're going to lose 1% of the value of our heritage asset in a century. So it depends. That, that will change depending on the risk. But the, the quantitative indicator we are adopting when we talk about risk to heritage assets is the expected loss of value to the heritage act, uh, uh, fractional. So how much percent we are losing in a certain amount of time of the value of the heritage, okay? So this is the indicator we are uh, adopting. And that allows us to compare damage by water with damage by fire, with chemical decay, with theft, with the dissociation, et cetera. So if you think of all bad things that can happen to a collection, for instance. So that will have an implication on, on the value of that collection. And we want to quantify that. Okay, so for instance, if we think about fire in a museum, right? So what's the risk, what's the expected uh, loss of value to the museum collection because of fire over a century, for instance, right? So it's fraction of loss expected to in a certain amount of time. 
In order to do that, in order for us, when we analyze the risk, to be able to say, this risk here, because of this risk, we expect to lose so much of the value of the heritage asset in a certain amount of time. In order to do that, we need to understand how the value of the heritage asset is distributed among its components. For instance, museum collections may have a couple of treasures, like super high Mona Lisa type important items that are more valuable than the average items in the collection. So we need to understand that. We want to quantify that because we want to use that when we assess the risk, when we estimate how much will be the loss of value to the collection, right? So just to illustrate, imagine this is a hypothetic uh, collection where we have like three categories of importance, relative importance of value. So we have the treasures, we have the high value items, and then we have the average values, the rest of the collection. If we have risks that affect the entire collection, that's no, we don't need to think about that. Like huge fire burning everything, so the whole asset will be affected. But quite uh, often, the risks are just they are spatially localized. So they affect a part of the collection, like a pest infestation, a water leak, or theft, right? So they don't affect the entire heritage asset. And then imagine the same type of uh, event or, pro or damaging process affecting, for instance, average value items or the treasures and the high value. So the same event would have a, quite a different impact on the collection depending on where it happens or which items it affects. So we need to understand that, right? And we also want to quantify that so that we can estimate how much of the collection value we expect to lose because of this or that or that other risk, right? So how do we do that? So this is an image of a convent. This is in uh, Ecuador, so it's uh, complex that is a, has a church, there's a museum inside, uh, and the, the building itself, so there's, it's a complex heritage asset. The value is distributed among the building, the church, the church objects, there's a museum collection there, there's a wall paint, so if you want to assess risk to this heritage asset, we need to understand how it's overall value is distributed among its parts, right? So that is uh, how and where we introduce these two, which is the, the value pipe, okay? So it's just a, a way to help us uh, visualize and communicate how the, the overall value of a heritage asset is distributed among its different parts. So this is jumping to another example, but here we see the, it's a pie diagram. Right? So this is another example of a heritage asset that is composed of a building, a collection, and it's in a heritage site, right? So uh, by assessing the relative importance of these three components based on the mission of the organization, different uh, criteria that I'm gonna talk a little bit about later on, we can uh, say, the building represents 50% of the overall value of that heritage asset. Collections, 40%, and site, 10%. Okay, just an example to illustrate how we present that. And for instance, inside the building, there are different components which have different relative importance between themselves. So we have the windows, historic, very important. They represent 20% of the value of the building. The exterior finish corresponds to about 15% and the interior finish 15%. So adding them up, we have the 50% contribution of the building, okay? And we can do the same for the collection where we have uh, textile treasures, average textile, textile objects of average value mixed objects which are treasures and mixed objects which are average. So 
Each category represents 10% out of the 40% represented by the collection. And in the site, we have landscape and some important sculptures. So we look at the components of the heritage asset, and we assign, we quantify the relative importance of each one of them. Because if we want to understand how big will be the impact of a certain risk that damaged the windows of the building, so this corresponds to about 20% of the value of the heritage asset being affected by that risk. Right? So we want to quantify, identify the relative, uh, the relevant components and quantify their relative importance. So these are the same diagrams now in French. And we can also go a uh, step uh, further. Just this is the same information on the table that's in the diagram. So here we see the building, the collections, and the site with their contributions. In the building, we had windows, finish, exterior and interior finish, and their contributions. So what we can do here is to quantify the relative importance of a single item. For instance, in the windows, we have 12 of, 12 of them, right, in this particular case. And because each win the, the set of windows represent 20% of the overall value of the heritage asset, and we have 12 windows, so here in the last column, we see the contribution of each individual window to the overall uh, value. So for instance, we're looking at the risk that there's a chance of one window being damaged, right, because of uh, it's taking a lot of uh, rainwater, so this particular wind. So there's a risk that's affecting one window. So which fraction of the value of the heritage asset is being affected? So we can look it up here. There's about one window corresponds to about 1.7% of the value of the, the entire heritage asset. One object of uh, average importance from the textile collection represents about this much of the total value. So we have quantified the contribution of each item of this asset to its overall value. So when we look at risks that affect the textile objects or just the windows or the sculptures, so we are able to say this risk will impact on this fraction of the value of the total uh, asset. So components, relative importance, and then down to single item. So that for the risk that affect single items, uh, we are able to say this risk will impact on this fraction of the value of the heritage asset. OK? Show you a concrete example. It, uh, recent work we did at the National Archives in Brazil. So here we were looking at the, the components of this collection were archival funds. So there were like 1,276 funds, right? So here are the different moving images, cartography, iconography, executive and legislative documents, private, sound, rare documents. This is a branch in, in the capital, the library, and then the judiciary funds, right? So we wanted to have an idea about how important was each fund for the collection. So what you see here, they're color-coded by sector, and each bar here is one fund. So we were able to, uh, by uh, discussing extensively with the colleagues at the archives, so we have identified uh, uh, the criteria to do this value assessment like um, legal value, historic value, aesthetic value, provenance. So there was a set of criteria defined by the institution, right? And they, uh, after that, they ranked. So they went through each fund, and they, they analyzed uh, the contribution of each criteria to each fund so that they could get an idea about the relative importance of each fund in the collection, right? So the 
the numbers here, what you see in the vertical scale, this is the relative importance of one fund in relation to the rest. So you can see, like, the judiciary, they were the most important part of the collection because the archives, there's a lot of legal and probational values we have there. And the documents from the government, from the executive and legislative power. So these guys, because of the mission of the National Archives and the criteria and the weights that were set, so these funds, they show that they are more important for the institution in relation, for instance, to cartography, right? So each individual fund has been uh, has been assessed and quantified in consultation because imagine many departments, many heads, and everybody's like, oh, my collection is more important or even as important as yours. So there's a lot of conflict, right, to come. So the idea is to clearly define criteria, like, okay, what are the criteria here that determine the importance of these funds, historic value, uh, legal value, uh, provenance and uh, uh, artistic value, aesthetic sometimes, uh, it was a low uh, weight. So they have identified the criteria. They also have defined themselves what is historic value, because for me it's something, maybe for Stefan or for you it's something else. So that was also uh, an important thing to define together and to validate the criteria. Right, so once that was clear, so now let's look at the funds and see how much each criteria exists in each fund. And there was an, a scale to score that. So they did that together, right, and this is the outcome. And it's traceable, so you're not lost in loops and fights, so it's all, we can trace that to the definition, to the scoring, so it's all there. And the, uh, the output is, as I said, the relative importance of each fund in relation to each other. And from there, we can do a value pie, right? From each color here on the pie corresponds to the colors on the graph. So for instance, in red, you see the contribution of the judiciary codes to the overall value of the archival collection. And light blue here, 24.1% is the contribution of the executive and legislative. So all together, these two, they are half, they represent 50% of the value of the entire archive collection. So that's used as a tool to prioritize, to make decisions, and also to look at the risks, right? So from the value assessment, we do a value, and it's also a tool to communicate. So with value pie, it's easier to visualize the relative importance of each, each part of the, the component. And we, we also did things such as how is the importance of this archive collection distributed in the different storage rooms? Okay, so what you see, the codes here, A, B, C, so each one is one storage room in the archive. And here on the, on the vertical X, this is how much of the value of that archive collection is stored in each room based on the value pie. So you can see the, the F rooms here, especially this one, it concentrates a lot, 12% of the value of the entire collection, right? So if you look at fifth floor here, and sixth, so the F5, F6 together, so they, these are important storage rooms to focus on, right? In terms of security, if you want to uh, make a higher priority for climate control and maintenance or for emergency response. So it was good to have an idea also spatially. How is this value distributed spatially in the building, right? To make decisions about that. And here, for instance, very low, almost nothing there in terms of value in these in storage rooms. So that they found that useful as well. Okay, so that is one part, just to try to understand how the value of a heritage asset, in our case specific a collection, is distributed among its parts. And we use that value pilot value assessment approach to uh, quantify that. 
that's used when we analyze the risk, but it's also a communication tool to show that as a value pie. When we uh, analyze the risks, we also want to get an idea about how big is the loss of value in each item affected by the risk. Imagine you have an objects of a collection that can be damaged by fire, by water, by pests, or by light. So in each case, the degree of damage and the type of damage will be different. So we want to give, uh, have also an idea about, okay, if this event happens, if we have a water event, the pipe leak hitting some of the objects in the collection, how big will be the loss of value in the affected objects? If we have a light sensitive objects exposed under certain conditions for 10 years in the future, after 10 years, how big will be the loss of value in these objects because of their color fading? So we want to quantify that as well, right? So that's another aspect. And a useful exercise is to have a, a set of the same type of objects damaged by different kinds of uh, things, such as uh, this is light fading from, this is a reference, original light faded, partially burned. Here we have uh, contaminated by dirty water in a flood attacked by insects or stolen, right? So we want to get a feeling also for, in each case, how big is the loss of value if this happens compared to the current state, right? So for instance, theft will be total loss. Theft is straightforward. But if we have a partial burn or color fading, how big is that loss in relation to the current condition of the object? So we also try to, to quantify that, right? And we'll talk more about that in the afternoon. So just to give an idea, some concrete situations. This has been uh, in the Netherlands in 2011, a theft of uh, seven uh, paintings in a collection in a museum, right? But these paintings were a uh, Picasso, a Monet, a Matisse, right? So what, is, what has been the loss of value to this collection? If you consider the entire collection and the seven items that, is, that have been stolen and given their relative importance, right? Because they were paintings by very important artists. What has been the loss of value to this collection? And then we can think of all kinds of uh, mishaps. So this, for instance, is our national library in Brazil. A water pipe from the air conditioning system has broken. This is uh, three years ago, so lots of water coming down the stacks and affecting a, a part of the collection. And water damage is different from theft in terms of loss of value in the each affected item. So how do we assess or how, what's the fraction of the value of the collection of the National Library that's being affected in this case? So this I'm showing you things that have already happened, but when we talk about risk, we try to imagine what can happen in the future similar to that or to the risk that are recurring, and which part of our collection or our heritage asset will be affected, how important it is, and what's the expected loss of value in the affected items. So that reasoning helps us uh, understand and quantify the risk. Fire, right, so different types of damage, different fractions of the heritage affected, and to different degrees. And we have pests, uh, just a library, um, some small damage. By, by rodents on books. So we can start to think about that, okay? So think into the future, what are the things that can affect our heritage asset from sudden and catastrophic to slow, gradual, and cumulative? Which part of the heritage asset will be affected? How important it is in relation to the rest of the asset? And how big will be the loss of value in the affected items? So that's just a, teaser and I think we uh, we are good here so thank you very much <laughs>